What's going on everybody? Sam Heine here, live from the Family Realty Studio. Here with Bobby Clifton with Cross Country Mortgage today. We're drinking a couple of ice cold brewskis. Just got done uh, with a long week in real estate. We're gonna go talk some shops, so let's, uh, let's go talk it up. All right, so first things first, crazy market out there, low inventory, uh, sellers are getting everything but the kitchen sink. It seems like buyers are having a tough time and having to get really creative and strategic with their agents to get their offers accepted. Um, what I'm curious about is, because you're working with a lot of buyers on your end, you're on the mortgage lending end, I'm on the realtor end, we work together on a lot of uh, these things. But what are you seeing on your end that is getting offers accepted mm -hmm. and then alternatively because you've you, you know everybody sees offers get declined as well what's mm -hmm. what's not working from what you're seeing and, sure uh, you know what what might give the uh, the folks at home a better chance of getting their offer accepted on the house they're bidding for great question first of all um yeah so the, a couple of things that we're seeing a lot of if um, government loans are tough right now to get accepted um I mean, we're just seeing a lot of um buyers with government loans, whether that's a USDA loan or a VA loan, FHA loan, low down, low down payment loans, there's a huge misconception on those loans that they're, uh, the buyers are higher risk, the deals have a higher probability of falling through. Um, they are low down payment, so the appraisal issue is obviously a problem because if the appraisal comes back short, we have a lot of times these buyers don't have a lot of the liquidity that a buyer that's got cash or somebody who's putting out 20% does. So there is, there is a, you're working with a smaller margin for error with some of these buyers. Um, so if, if you have got to use uh, government, government loan, do it. Um, the USDA loans, there's a little bit more, I think, in my opinion, um, you have a higher probability of getting an offer accepted. They're a little bit, they're just, they're, they're, they're a little bit different because there's not much competition typically because it's not something like right in, um, in areas where there's tons and tons of competition, but the VA loans are tough, FHA loans are difficult. There's a big misconception on appraisals too that I think um, factors in with some of these uh, decisions that are being made by, by sellers. Um, if you want to get your offer accepted, the the best, in my opinion, what we've seen the most the most um, um, success with is a large down payment, conventional financing, um, a local lender. Um, and just a lot of communication and transparency. Like we try to communicate with the listing agent when we have a buyer who's making an offer on a house, call them, try to get as much information as possible. Um, at the end of the day, you wanna put your best foot forward. And I wanna make sure my buyer is, is getting in that house or is taking their, their best shot. So yeah. if um, we can't get a whole listing agent, if it's somebody who doesn't like to communicate or if, I've got a, if it's a tricky situation, it just makes, makes it difficult. Um, yeah. So a lot of down payment, good credit, um, you know, a thorough pre-approval, and those are those are no guarantee, but you're 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 definitely going to put yourself in the yeah. you're going to have a better chance of winning. Such a good start, you know, like that as a base, I think will get you pretty far. If not an accepted contract, mm -hmm. it's so competitive right now, you might have to strike out a couple of times before you get one. Um, but I think sellers, from from what I'm seeing, are just looking to mitigate their risk. Yep. You know, they're looking to get somebody. They they want to pick the right one that's going to give them the best chance to get to the closing table. So, yep. you know, sometimes that takes, um, you know, easing up on your uh, appraisal inspection mm -hmm. contingencies. Um, and uh, like, what 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 exactly? What's the cutoff for the appraisal piece? Because is is it like a twenty percent kind of thing? Um, cause that is such an attractive thing for, yeah. for a seller not to have to worry about. They're like, yeah. okay, these two are neck and neck, but one of them doesn't want an appraisal. One mm -hmm. of them, um, isn't going to ask me for any repairs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with that one. Sure. So we're seeing more and more, and this is, uh, I think Fannie, Fannie, Fannie and Freddie, Fannie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac came out with the property inspection waiver. It's also known as an appraisal waiver. Um, I think back in 2016 or 17 and the, 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 the nice thing about it is if you have a buyer who's got 20% down, they're purchasing a house in an area where there's a lot of data, so they have lots of information on past sales, and if there's enough information that supports the purchase price and the buyer is low risk, meaning they've got, I'd say, at minimal 10%, probably 20% down, um, good credit, everything checks all the boxes as far as like the risk le level being really low. Yeah. A lot of times we're seeing appraisal waivers. And I think they, they, they give these on about 10 to 15% of deals. So we can leverage that with an offer 
if you've got a buyer, we want to make sure they obviously know what they're doing. But if it's a situation where there's 20 offers and we can waive the appraisal contingency because we don't have an appraisal waiver, it's just another leg up that you're going to have. A lot of lenders aren't going that extra mile and running the loan and making sure, you know, whether, you know, we have an appraisal or we, or we don't have to have an appraisal. So yeah. it helps out. Um, the inspection piece, same thing. The, there's, in this market, you got to find creativity. And I think the, the inspection is one thing. The appraisal is one thing. Um, ideally, it's not a perfect situation for a buyer, but if they love the house and they want to get into it, those are some things that you can use um, to gain a leg up on the competition, I think. All right. So <clears throat> from your end of the table, what do you see for 2021? Because I know you mentioned the last time sure. we talked that rates were creeping up just a tick. Mm -hmm. You see a seller's market transitioning to more of a neutral market. What can people expect from what you're seeing uh, in, the, in the real estate market in 2021? Sure. Good question. Um, to be honest with you, I we... Like almost every year since like 13 or 14, we've seen it's been a seller's market. I mean, the, the, the inventory keeps going down. Um, unless if we had some kind of like crazy event, I, like this year is going to be a seller's market. I think next year it's hard to predict, but I would say we're, we're going to still have an inventory problem. Until rates go up more, we get more construction. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of factors at play, but I honestly think until pandemic's through, until we see some of these things loosen up, we're going to see yeah. not much inventory, a ton of buyers. Um, since the pandemic hit last year, I, like the inventory has just gone down more and more, and the buyer pool has just increased and increased and increased. And I, it's going to take a long time to absorb that, even if people started selling houses, um, rates went up, pandemic, we see some light at the end of the tunnel. I think that the mark. I think the inventory. It's gonna take a long time for it to balance out. Yeah, harder to get materials mm. on the building side. Mm. Um, more expensive to build. Um, people are selling less. It's kind of a, <clears throat> a crazy thing going on. And one thing that I think is interesting is people are freaking out about the inventory. It is mm. low, but it's been creeping lower and lower in, in recent years. But. Uh, coming out of spring, we are seeing it tick up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like we're seeing more coming on the market. But now that we're coming into spring, it's mid-March. Yep. Winter is always a, a slow time of the year, especially coming out of a pandemic. And so I'm thinking I'm thinking it's gonna get better than what we saw a month ago when you saw the, the flush of articles coming out. Like, what's going on in, in real estate? Nobody's nobody's selling anything. Yeah. You know, are we seeing something come into a halt? I think I think it's I think we're gonna see more inventory. I, I honestly think we're still the, the, the inventory problem is going to be there. Um, what I, what I, I do, we're starting to see more houses on the market. We're, there's a ton of buyers though, so they're quickly absorbing all these listings. <clears throat> the, the, I, and I, one of the things I'm seeing a lot, in, it would, I work with a lot of first-time home buyers, and a lot of them are, they're having a hard time getting into houses. They don't have much down payment. They're getting beat out on offers. Um, they're looking at building. The problem with building is the cost to build has gone up astronomically yeah and you can't if you're buying a house and you're in that two hundred thousand dollar price range it's hard to hard to build in that price range hard. so you're kind of left with like hey i need to find an existing house and you don't have a lot of cash to put down um yeah. it's it's a problem so the, it, the, the inventory is just not there yet so i think right. we're going to see that for the through the end of the year yeah it's hard to do unless you want to build a house that you have to rebuild in 10 years exactly <laughs> exactly yeah, exactly. yeah. So in closing here, we've covered a lot of good topics. Um, I'm just curious from your experience working with buyers in different parts of town, and I'm gonna answer after you, um, what are a couple of projects, areas, neighborhoods that you're excited about mm -hmm. that you see on a certain trajectory that might make them worth investing in, buying a home mm -hmm. in, that you think could be a really cool area or is a cool area that's gonna sure. become a cooler area in the next five years? Sure, um, that's a great question. I um, work with a lot of buyers, and I see a lot of buyers purchasing in different parts of town, whether that's down in Butchertown, where the new stadium is. Um, we see a lot, I see a lot of people purchasing in Shelby Park. If they're trying to get in Germantown and they want to get into a lower price point, but they're right in the middle of things, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people purchasing in that area. Whether is that a good investment right now, I don't know, but I've seen a lot of that. Clifton, same thing. You want to get close to Crescent Hill, uh, I know they're doing some new renovations with Bingham Park um, off of Coral Avenue down there. And it, that's another area where I think that it's like right on the cusp of blowing up. Um, it's hard to imagine that area staying the way it is. So yeah. um, 
Clifton. Um, I like Butchertown, Smoketown a lot. Um, Shelby Park seems like it's it's coming along. They've got Logan Street Market. There's some a lot of new new stuff going in, in down there. But um, as far as like what the next thing is, I don't know. I wish I had like. 20 years ago, I wish I would known Germantown was going to yeah. be the way it is now. Um, but there's just so much that it's exciting to be a part of it, be in this industry right now, because you've got so many different areas, so many neighborhoods that are really, I think, taking a life of their own. Um, Portland, another thing, you can get in very cheap in that area. And you're starting to see some like bits and pieces of that coming together. Yeah, um, We're seeing a lot of uh, revitalization and a lot of uh, like just... A lot of excitement, a lot of growth in that area. Totally. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's interesting because, you know, like new builds are so hot. I mean, mm. they, they're really, they have their formula down. They're really great houses, but they're kind of out in the burbs, you know, yep. they're in the east end, uh, south end, um, and they're great options too. But I think there's this, this uh, mass, um, people are looking for, uh, I guess you could call it urban Louisville, Germantown, yep. Smoketown, Shelby Park. It's close to downtown concert halls the waterfront mm -hmm. um, a lot of cool things just a stone's throw away that people want to get close to and so I, th I feel like a lot of people are are driving down there as well looking to live close to there yep. um, Paris Town Point is about to completely turn over um, we're seeing a lot, a lot a lot too with the because of the market the way it's at or where it's in right now with not much inventory construction is expensive um, we're seeing a lot of buyers right now purchasing property like like um, fixer uppers that are not in the greatest shape going in fixing those up there's loans that you can do conventional loans there's a home style program uh, FHA's got a 203k rehab loan so some of those some of the loans are geared for just renovating some of these houses that are closer to the downtown instead of having to do new construction yeah it's 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 exciting um, whether what neighborhoods are um, the next big thing, mm -hmm. it's hard to tell. At least for me, depends on I guess what floats your boat, where you're mm -hmm. where you're working, what you like to do. There's some. Uh, it seems like in Louisville for for everyone, so it's kind of exciting to watch it all play out. Yeah, we'll yeah we'll see. I uh, uh, there's a lot of, lot of lot of uh, exciting things to take take an eye on. Yeah. And there you have it, folks, another monthly market update in the books. Thank you to Bobby Clifton of the Cross Country Mortgage for joining us today. Um, always, always an interesting uh, morsel to hear from somebody on a different side of the industry on what's going on in the market. So hopefully you uh, took something away from this week and, uh, or this month. And uh, we will see you next month. Thanks for tuning in.